One of the best things about Disney's new DuckTales series is how it takes ideas from episodes of the classic 1987 series and evolves them. It's this art of taking a simple 1990s cartoon lesson and giving it more weight, making it broader, not only retaining what made that original lesson something important, but also keeping nostalgia for that original storyline. Doesn't Uncle Scrooge usually make the long-winded treasure speeches? Long-winded? <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, maybe I've fallen into a bit of a pattern making these long-winded story analysis, and maybe it's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but 2020 has been a long year, guys. Didn't we all kind of want a break? Nonsense! Suffering builds character! Okay, okay, fair point, but... Honesty is the first step to living truthfully. Oh boy, okay. Let's just do this. Let's go on a journey to discover our own personal truth. Or whatever. This is the Lost Harp of Nirvana. In a lot of ways, this episode is closer to a 1987 DuckTales episode than a lot of the new series so far. It still has the great character moments that help define what modern DuckTales is, but it's also very much an adventure of the week, seeking lost treasure, specifically the lost harp of Nirvana. This return to classic adventure of the week stuff is thanks in no small part to the discovery of Isabella Finch's journal in the first episode of season three. Now, the family is on an adventure to find the Lost Harp of Nirvana, a magical instrument owned by a race of creatures that could live on both the land and the sea. And one member of the Duck family is very excited about that. And another is not. Half person, half fish? Do you know what that is? Disgusting! Ultimately, Webby is right. This adventure is about mermaids. Mer people. People with fish fins for feet. Either way, this makes this episode ripe for Little Mermaid references. And sure enough, there's definitely a few jokes sprinkled throughout the episode nodding directly to the Disney classic movie. From a castle that looks suspiciously like Prince Eric's kingdom to the more obvious lyrical references. Whoa, look at this stuff! Isn't it neat? <gasps> Unlike the citizens of the Little Mermaid's Atlantica under the sea, however, these mermaids are kind of hippies? In Nirvana, we believe in finding your personal truth. But you must be self-reliant and find it on your own. Oh! These hippie Mervanans won't tell Scrooge and his family anything about the lost magical harp they're looking for unless they prove themselves by finding their own truth. That sounds a little nebulous, but what it really seems to mean is making an effort to be transparent about who you are, dropping all pretenses and facades, and just being honest with yourself. This is far easier for some members of the Duck Clan than others. The kids, for instance, have no problem just being kids. But how it pans out for the adults is by far the most interesting aspect of this. For instance, I love Donald's small arc in this episode. From the very moment they start trying to figure out what their personal truth is, Donald has it covered and settles into this happy, relaxed, carefree mood. Oh man! That sounds almost out of character for Donald, but maybe it isn't. The Donald Duck we usually see is this high-strung, quick-to-anger character, sometimes jealous and overprotective. But this shows us a Donald Duck who just wants to relax and be happy. And to be honest, that's not far off for who he is as a character. In old cartoons and comics, when someone isn't playing a prank on Donald Duck, like when he's not fighting off Chip and Dale in an orchard or dealing with Huey, Dewey, and Louie as mischievous children, more often than not, he's just trying to enjoy a nice meal or hang out in the backyard and take it easy. He's famous in Uncle Scrooge comics for being more interested in enjoying his vacation or having an ice cream soda than working hard. And I kind of like that about this episode. It focuses on that truth for Donald, that if he wasn't burdened by responsibilities, maybe he'd want to live a happy, simple, carefree life. And to be honest, wouldn't we all? Either way, this portrayal puts Donald very much in line with the hippie mermaid's way of thinking. But don't let that fool you into thinking that a carefree, relaxed attitude is what these Mervanans really want, that they think it's the right way to live. 
Donald's personal truth might be carefree and relaxed, but Uncle Scrooge's isn't. Are you willing to give up all of your worldly possessions? Mm, sure. You can have my money. Then you pry it from my cold, dead hands! Thank you. That is your truth. And I think that's a great way to sum up the theme of this episode. Uncle Scrooge's truth is one of personal responsibility and hard work. He's at his best when he's honest about that, that he's about being tougher than the toughies and smarter than the smarties. Not pretending to be about peace and love to have a facade to fool mermaid people in thinking that he's like them. And I really like that that's what the mermaids are striving for here. Not that he have their worldview, but that Scrooge just be honest with himself about who he is. Because honesty and not lying to others about who you are may be important, but it's also really important to have a personal honesty about who you are and who you want to be. I think this moment really encapsulates that well. Of course, that's only half the story of this episode. While Scrooge and Donald are trying to find the harp by learning their personal truths, Mrs. Beakley, Louie, and Webby venture off into a cave to find it more directly. They eventually do find the magic harp, while exploring a few truths of their own personalities along the way. Something is going on here. But we can't tell Webby until we know what. You can't hide the truth from her! I kept her in a mansion for a decade. That worked out pretty well. What are you whispering about? As for the lost harp of Mervana itself, it's a magical harp that only speaks the truth and calls out anybody around it who's telling a lie. That's definitely an interesting idea. One that actually comes from the 1987 DuckTales episode called Raiders of the Lost Harp. In that story, the Harp of Troy works kind of as a lie detector, singing her fibbing song when anybody, well, fibs. No, no, no! You are fibbing, fibbing, fibbing! She's fibbing, fibbing, fibbing! That story was focused more on direct lies. And there's elements of that in this new story. The Lost Harp of Nirvana calls out Mrs. Beakley for lying to her granddaughter in an attempt to keep her safe from the hard truths of the world. But the theme of this episode is a little more about being true to yourself, true to your intentions, being honest in a general sense, and perhaps more importantly, not ignoring an obvious truth. Like the truth the King of Mervana ignored about the hard work that needed to be done on land. Being too afraid to put in that hard work and face the harsh realities of running a kingdom and running away. I also really like the symbolism introduced here in this story too. The more the King of Mervana ignores his responsibilities and runs away from the truth, the more of a monster he becomes. And although that's all cloaked in story and allegory, I think it's a good lesson for a cartoon to have. Running from the truth just makes your problems grow. It's better to embrace reality and learn how to face it head on. It'll be hard, but it'll be better in the long run. We should all face the real truth that everything is terrible. Oof, that, that's, that's a little too real, Webs. But she's not wrong. Life can really feel that way a lot of the time. And if you're watching this in 2020, you know it's been a pretty hard year. We could and may want to run from the hard truths of our lives, like the King of Mervana, but then our problems would only grow. We could wallow in pity over the hard truths in our lives like Webby, but then we're stuck in a depressive funk with nowhere to go. A lot of the time, the only way out is forward. You can't keep escaping your problems. The only way to fix your fallen kingdom is to put in the hard work. I really like how this story evolved this idea over the original Harp of Truth story from the 1987 DuckTales. Taking it beyond a simple fable about lying and stepping back further to examine what being honest and truthful with yourself and your situation in life can really mean. That lesson even encapsulates its own hard truth in the case of Donald, who knows who he is and who he wants to be, despite also knowing who he has to be to be a father and meet his responsibilities. This episode was also packed with a lot of great visual gags and jokes, as always. My favorites are when Louie is celebrating silently, when Beakley agrees that something fishy is going on in Mervana. My other favorite bit of the episode is just, well, everything about the way Della plays tic-tac-toe with herself. Yeah! No! 
Wow! As for my personal truth, well, I think we can all agree it's about time I get back to making these videos on a bit more of a regular basis, despite how busy and crazy everything has been this year. New episodes of DuckTales are only a few weeks away, so I'll do my best to catch up on this YouTube channel before then. In the meantime, as always, thanks so much for watching. If you want to see more of these reviews, don't forget to do the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, or whatever. Until that next time, thanks for watching as always, and take it easy, Internet.